Finance ministers are meeting to discuss whether to boost the EU bailout fund, which was only set up last year. The European Commission and European Central Bank want to widen the fund to give it more flexibility if larger Eurozone members like Spain need help. Belgium's finance minister wants the pot doubled to 1.5 trillion euro. However, Germany, the biggest Eurozone economy, has so far ruled out any substantial increase. A reflection of the major tensions within the Union. Now, we can cross live to Nigel Farage. He's a member of the European Parliament and leader of the UK Independence Party and joins us now live from Strasbourg. Thanks very much indeed for being with us here in the program, Nigel. Now, as we can see, there is no unity in the European Union as far as the, uh, this fund is concerned. So how much of a chance is there that it might actually be created against uh, Germany's unwillingness to do so? Well, in the end, you see, it's German politicians that will make these decisions, not the German people. Uh, I'm quite certain that if at any point in time the German people have been asked initially whether they wanted to give up the Deutschmark, they'd have said no. Um, and if you ask the German people now, do they want to pick up a liability that in financial terms will be six times bigger than the liability they picked up when Eastern Germany joined them 20 years ago, the answer again would be no. So my guess is that the German finance minister, the German chancellor, uh, will make sceptical noises, will, will voice a bit of disagreement, but in the end, my guess is they will go along with it, because they are part of this European political class that have created this monster called the Euro, and in the end, they're going to do whatever they can to try and save it. Well, speaking about this fund, I mean, if the decision to expand it does go ahead, um, how much of a solution really is the fund, or is it more of a problem long term? I think the fact they want to effectively double the size of the fund, the fact they want the fund to have a different scope, which would mean that it's not just the European Central Bank that's buying European debt, it would be the fund itself also that would buy debt. Um, I think what they're doing here is they're reinforcing failure. At the end of the day, countries like Greece and Portugal and Ireland and possibly even Spain should never have joined the euro in the first place. They're now trapped inside an economic prison uh, with a whole set of policies that don't suit their circumstances. And I think the more we build up the bailout fund, the more in effect we're pouring good money after bad. And this really is a tragedy because, you know, these people who are stuck inside, you know, I mean, Greece, we have mass demonstrations, we have violence, we've had people actually killed on the streets. And, and, and if, if they hold the Eurozone together, then the conditions in those countries are frankly going to get worse. And what it really needs is a frank assessment, which is there is an argument that in Northern Europe, with, with Germany and Luxembourg and Holland and a few countries like that, possibly France as well, that there is an optimal currency zone that can work and can hang together. But for the North and South of Europe to be stuck inside a monetary union is never, ever going to work. But nobody inside these institutions wants to face up to that. And, and when the EU president, Herman Van Rompuy, comes here to Strasbourg tomorrow morning, I should be saying this to him across the floor of the European Parliament. And I've no doubt they'll all boo and they'll all jeer because they're all in denial that this project cannot work. Well, Mr. Farage, let's take a look at the situation in a broader context. I mean, you mentioned some of the countries that are not doing so well, and Portugal is one of them. Uh, yeah. So you're blaming the euro for their problems. But, uh, I mean, some countries uh, still want to join the euro. For example, Estonia just joined the eurozone not so long ago. Now, why yes. is that? I mean, if the euro yes, is I mean, an unstable <laughs> currency, if uh, the European, some of the European eurozone countries are not doing so well, why is it that more countries want to be part of the eurozone? Yeah, the Estonia decision is quite extraordinary. I mean, it's rather like boarding the Titanic after it's hit the iceberg. It is the most incredible decision. Uh, look, what you've got here behind this whole European project, whether we talk about the union itself or whether we talk about the currency, we have a political class who want this. You know, even countries like Switzerland and Norway, who very sensibly have stayed outside the union, who have genuine, sensible free trade agreements with it, even in those countries, a majority of politicians would sign them up for all of this stuff. So that's the great battle that is going on in Europe. It's the battle between the political leaders and public opinion, which increasingly is saying, we don't want this. Now, in the end, public opinion is going to win because you can't build a new state, and that's what we're engaged in here, without having the consent of the peoples. And that consent has never been asked for, and it's never been given. 
Well, like it or not, I mean, the euro is not going away tomorrow. It cannot just disappear overnight. So some things got to be done in order to, um, you know, come up with a solution for the European woes there. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, what can be done to keep the euro, to, to save the euro, to strengthen its position in the European Union? Well, uh, you know, what they're doing, what they're doing by increasing the bailout funds and by carrying on this lunatic policy of buying their own debt and then after last week's auctions in Portugal patting themselves on the back. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Haven't the auctions gone well? Well, in fact, all they've done is buy their own debt. And so, you know, they will go on doing this. They will do everything they can to keep this monetary union together. But in the end, the fundamentals will prevail and it's not going to work. And, you know, I look at um, countries like Greece and, and Ireland and Portugal and then I look at a country like Iceland. Iceland, outside of the EU, uh, they took their pain all in one big hit. Uh, they had a massive devaluation of their currency. It fell by about 80% in value in a few weeks. Uh, but now, two years down the track, we see that Iceland is heading back towards growth. Um, the currency is now appreciating. There has to be a bust here. You know, these countries, these southern European countries, cannot stay within this European zone, and it's about time we woke up to it. Well, while clearly there seems to be a division on how to handle this crisis uh, uh, in the EU, uh, we've got China's that pledged to buy Spanish government bonds and Japan that vowed to help Portugal. So the Asian countries seem to be doing more to help uh, than, you know, the European countries, the countries within the European uh, Union and uh, Germany specifically as the uh, biggest uh, economy. So why is that? Well, certainly the Chinese have been buying some bonds, although um, I wouldn't describe it as being much more than dipping their toes in the water. Uh, the Chinese are very much long-term players and long-term investors, um, and they will seek to get as much influence in Europe as they possibly can. But, you know, they're not going to prop the whole thing up um, if they can see that bonds are going to get considerably cheaper. So they'll, they'll pursue a strategy of scale-down buying these things. That is my guess. But, you know, the other big worry I've got is that with the ECB buying up its own debt and now with this, with this half agreement yesterday in Brussels um, that the stability fund should start doing the same thing, you know, you begin to ask yourself a year, 18 months down the track, uh, will, the, will the European Central Bank itself actually be, uh, you know, a liquid functioning organisation? So All we are doing here... What We're is your answer to that? Failure. So will it be a functional organization? What do you think? Well, I just don't know. But my fear is that this contagion in the financial markets is going to spread. It's already spread to Portugal. It looks like Spain's on the agenda. Goodness knows, if it gets as far as Italy, uh, you, you know, then the sums we're talking about to prop this thing up are going to be absolutely astronomical. And as that happens, uh, you know, you begin to question not just the sovereign debt of a small country like Ireland, um, but the whole sovereign debt position of the European Union itself. That is the direction that we're headed in. Um, if we continue to pursue a strategy, which is to prop up and keep together a monetary union that does not work. Well, Nigel, let's step out of the Eurozone for a while and uh, go uh, to Britain uh, for, uh, for a change. Uh, as we uh, know from our uh, correspondent in the UK, Britain's bankers are in line for some uh, big bonuses again this year. How do you feel about that? Look, I, you know, politicians and central bankers, uh, particularly in America and in Britain, made some disastrous errors in the late 1990s, um, allowed the banks to, to massively overextend themselves and overlend, and we finished up bailing out these banks. I can quite understand why the man in the street finds it abhorrent that people earn these large sums of money, but the difficulty is that in global finance it is a competitive market, and what we really want is we want the banks that have been propped up with public money to be profitable. We want to get a decent return on the money that we put in. And that means you have to keep the top talent within those banks. So if people are generating huge profits for HSBC or whoever else it is, if people are generating massive profits, you have to reward them because if you don't, they move somewhere else. And I know that sounds unpalatable, but it's the truth. All right, Nigel Farage, European Parliament member and leader of the Eurosceptic UK Independence Party. Thanks very much indeed for being here with us on the program. Thank you.
And while Europe mulls over its economic woes, China is offering its support to help the continent tackle its crisis. In his latest program, Max Kaiser looks at why the Asian state is doing it. The Kaiser